Coach Belichick, obviously nine picks in this draft, five for the first 75. Hasn't happened in quite a while. What is your philosophy when it comes to having so many picks early? Uh, well, we're fortunate because that gives us a lot of flexibility. I think that we could, you know, move up, move down. Um, you know, a couple of years ago we were at seven and 56 or whatever it was. And, you know, there isn't too much you can do when you're in a spot like that. So, um, you know, hopefully we're well prepared on the draft board and, We'll try to find a spot where we can get good value for our picks. What is the difference when you look at a draft board with so much sort of ammunition, so much power early with those six picks through three rounds? Well, again, I think it forces you to really know the board. You need to know uh, what's above you, what's below you, and, and kind of what's in between uh, on all those picks because there's a possibility that teams could ask you to move or, or you may want to move for a particular player. So. Um, you've really got to do that, whereas if, if you're really not going to move, then a lot of times if, let's say, you're picking at 20, uh, you can pretty much eliminate the first 10 players because there's really you know, no way you could get to some of them. So um, I think it just forces you to really prepare well for the draft you know, all the way through in every round at, at every pick. The kind of interest you've had in terms of other teams acquiring some of the picks that you do have, especially the, uh, the picks earlier. Well, I think it's pretty normal at this point, a couple of days before the draft, to have discussions with other teams just to expedite the conversations on draft day if, if it were to come to that. So usually those picks are, are traded based on who's on the board. If a particular player is there that another team wants or that we want or, or whatever, then that, uh, that stimulates the conversation. So this is kind of more just you know some placeholders. Would you be interested in moving? Um, you know, no, we wouldn't, or yes, we would. And, mm -hmm. and then um, you know on draft day, if, if you already have that information, that may uh, expedite the process of, you know, we don't want to contact this team because they're, you know, they're going to sit where they are. I'm kind of fascinated by the difference for you between drafting a guy who's the best player on the board, which a lot of teams do, and drafting for need and value. What's the difference for you? Well, I think ultimately it's value. If, if you get a good player, uh, then you know, you've got a solid player at that position, and, and that's great. If you take a need uh, and the player doesn't pan out, then you're back at the same point the following year doing the same thing all over again. So uh, I think if we can get good value for our picks, then uh, we'll improve our football team, and, and ultimately that's what it's all about. Uh, if it happens to be at a position that we like, great, but uh, as long as it's a good football player that, that'll, um, you know, be the type of person and player in our program that we want, then I think we'll be happy with that pick. As you look at this year, what are some of the more pressing needs in your mind that you need to fulfill in this draft? Well, I think that we can improve really at every position, um, you know, and, and we've done in the off season. We, we've done that, you know, from a coaching standpoint, trying to do a better job of coaching and be more efficient in our, our schemes and our, our play selection and things like that. But, you know, across the board, uh, I think whether it be offense, defense, or the kicking game, you're always looking to improve. And, and I think there are young players in this draft that, can help our football team at every position. And, and if, if it isn't them, then their competition will make some of the players that we have better. So either way, I think it helps the team, and uh, we'll just see how all that plays out. Why are you so good at targeting players specifically in the second round? Uh, you know, I think we really try to look at every, every pick the same as to try to get our best, the best value we can for the pick. Some of them have worked out. Some of them haven't. Um, I wouldn't say there's any set philosophy in the second round or fourth round or any round, really. It's to try to take the player that we feel like is, uh, has the most to offer our program and that we feel like can develop in our program. And um, as I said, you know, we've, we've had some, some players that have worked out and, and some that haven't worked as well. But at the time we took them, we felt like that was the best choice. Coach, I really see you as a mastermind in the draft. When you look at this year's pool of talent, in particular, what do you find most unique about it or most intriguing coming in? Well, I think each draft has its own, its own, it's its own special draft. Obviously, the players are, it's a one-time opportunity, and then the strengths and weaknesses of the draft and the depth of the various positions uh, makes each draft very, very unique, as do the, the, the rankings or the, the order that the teams are picking in. So, um, you know, player-wise, this year there's there's certainly a lot of depth in certain positions, um, and obviously the defensive line, uh, offensive line, receivers, um, and then as the as it goes through the, you know, as you look at the entire group, 
Uh, there's a lot of depth in the running back and, and uh, defensive back positions. Uh, maybe not right up the top, but certainly it looks like there are a lot of players there that will be big contributors uh, at some point. So it'll be interesting to see how all that sorts out. Um, certainly the defensive line, front seven, is a, a very interesting situation this year, and, and I'm sure a lot of those players will get picked high, and, and probably the teams that uh, end up getting the best players out of that group will look back and, and feel the best about this draft. You are young. How does that youth affect the way that you approach this draft? Uh, well, I don't, I don't think it really affects us too much. I think we still uh, go back to our core philosophy of trying to find the best players that we can for our football team and, and uh, let them compete with the guys that are here, and, and um, we'll just see how all that plays out, whether that's new players coming onto the team or players on the team, uh, you know, raising their level of play. Uh, if it makes our team better, then that's what it's all about.